Today I want to talk about the cell cycle and cell division, how cells carry out the processes they need to in order to divide, in order to have the organism carry out the other functions it needs. Here, for example, we're looking at onion root cells, that through cell division it allows the root to elongate along this axis so that it can stretch, making new cells to help it accomplish its function. Cells divide in general for a number of reasons. In unicellular organisms, for example, what we see here is one cell dividing every 20 minutes to give rise to two new cells and eventually thousands of cells in the space of only a few hours. In your body, starting with one cell, through cell division you get to the 10 or so trillion cells in your body. That This allows you to grow and develop over time and as well. As cells die through cell division, they are replaced with two new ones to fill in any gaps that may have resulted. Eukaryotes have very complex cell cycles where they accomplish different phases. We begin here. This is where the cell begins, just after it has been formed, that all cells come from existing cells. The first phase of the cell cycle is G1 or gap phase 1. Here, the cell grows and carries out a variety of other functions that it, that it needs, that cells spend most of their time in G1. Following this, if a cell is to divide, it enters the DNA synthesis phase. In the S phase, you duplicate your DNA, so you have two copies, so when the cell does split, each cell gets the equal amount of DNA that you began with. Next, you have G2. Here, the cell stocks up on nutrients and energy, and prepares for cell division. This cell division in the mitotic or M phase consists of two phases we'll talk about, mitosis and cytokinesis. Interphase, as we see in our previous diagram, is where the cell spends most of its lifespan, G1, S, and G2 phases. That here we have a number of functions that the cell carries out, its normal functions as we know. For example, making proteins using coded instructions from the nucleus, as well copying its DNA as needed to make two identical copies from one original one, and converting energy from its environment into new forms for its uh, own use. Most of the time, your cells are an interface. If we go back to our onion root tip that we started with, that through this light microscope, we see a number of cells whose nuclei have been stained for easy analysis, that most of these cells are an interphase. Their nucleus has DNA that is uncondensed. It is just a blob of color. No distinct DNA is visible. Some cells, however, are in the middle of division, and you can see their chromosomes very clearly as they're being separated. These chromosomes are a complex of proteins and DNA so that the six or so feet of DNA can be packed into every single one of your cells. When you pack this tightly, uh, that you get this chromosome, this uh, tight complex of DNA and other proteins. The DNA is condensed in this way some of the time. Most of the time, it's very loosely packed so that it can be read and interpreted to make proteins as necessary. What we see is that in interphase, when the cell is not dividing, the DNA is kind of spread out throughout the nucleus, but when it is dividing, this DNA is condensed and therefore easy to see when it is about to be split. These chromosomes condense, they shrink, and are very tightly wrapped, so that they don't tangle with each other when they are about to be separated. Uh, tangling will result in mutations and DNA damage, and that's very bad for the cell itself. What we see here, therefore, is the process of condensation. In a normal nucleus, this DNA is uncondensed, as we see in this cell here. But in this dividing cell, the DNA condenses just before it is about to be split apart. If a cell, therefore, is to divide, what it needs to do is, in the S phase, copy its chromosome to make two identical chromosomes in this X shape stuck together so that these two copies, when they're separated, give you the original chromosome in each of the two new cells that are created and in G2 phase, the GAP2 phase, it copies its various organelles so that they can be split between the two daughter cells giving them an equal component. Cell division therefore consists of two related phases, the division of the nucleus and its DNA. This nucleus uh, 
division is known as mitosis, and it consists of four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, that we'll talk about, and cytokinesis, that is the division of everything else in the cell, the cytoplasm, the organelles, and the cell membrane. The first stage of mitosis is known as prophase. In this chart, we look at G1 and S and G2, and now we're on to the first phase of cell division, that is prophase. Here, we can see that the nuclear membrane has started to break down so that you can have these chromosomes inside, which are now condensing, be able to move about freely as they're being divided, that you also get these spindle fibers originating from the centrosome, as it's called. These are fibers that grab onto the chromosomes and move them around and separate them as necessary. This happens in metaphase. Here we see in metaphase, the second phase of mitosis, that the spindle fibers have aligned these chromosomes in the middle of the cell along what is known as the metaphase plate, this imaginary equator or line dividing the cell in half. This, these two sister chromatids that make up each chromosome are now facing opposite sides and they're about to be split down the middle in the next phase known as anaphase. The spindle fibers beginning, uh, beginning uh, shortening so that uh, you have these chromosomes being split. As these begin to shorten, what we get is a separation of these chromosomes into sister chromatids. The last stage, telophase, is where you start to see the spindle fibers disappearing and the new nuclei begin to form. The chromosomes too begin, instead of uh, remaining very condensed, begin to uncondense back into chromatin, this diffuse spread out DNA. Mitosis is then followed by cytokinesis, the last part. Here, the rest of the cell is split, the organelles, the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, so that you form two new daughter cells. What we see here is a cell under a fluorescent microscope, that is a light microscope where certain uh, structures in the cell have been tagged with fluorescent proteins to make them easier to see. Green is the cytoskeletal elements, and blue is the DNA. In interphase, the DNA is spread out, is very uncondensed. The cytoskeletal elements are holding various parts of the cell in place as necessary, doing their normal functions. When we get to prophase, we're starting to see the chromosome starting to condense and the spindle fibers forming these green strands throughout the cell. Then, in metaphase, as these chromosomes are grabbed by the spindle fibers, they're aligned in the center of the cell. In anaphase, we're starting to see these chromosomes being pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. And in telophase, the two new nuclei starting to form as the cell begins to split. In this animation, see if you can follow along. Your cells don't only have two chromosomes, as are shown here. They have 46 chromosomes each. We can see that this cell here shows many chromosomes. Try and find each of these stages as they happen in this animation here. Prophase, as the DNA condenses. Metaphase, as the chromosomes are aligned. Anaphase, as they are split. And telophase, as the two new nuclei form, followed by cytokinesis, where the cell itself splits. This is a, an actual human cell in the lab, uh, going through the process as of the cell cycle. Let's watch it again. Here we have DNA condensing, aligning in the center, being split, and then following by cytokinesis. This process is speeded up, but in even in the adult human body, there are still some cells that are dividing. It takes quite a long time for the cell to divide. Even in actively dividing cells, the interphase of G1, S, and G2 takes more than a day. The process of mitosis and cytokinesis, on the other hand, takes up to three hours or so, that each of these phases are very distinct. And we should again point out that the cell spends most of its lifespan in G1. In the adult body, some cells, which are not needed to keep dividing, stay in G1, or a related phase where they just sleep. So, in summary, 
Cells divide for a number of reasons, in order to reproduce if you are a single-celled organism, or in order to grow and develop, or to repair any damaged tissues, any cells that have been lost or died. But the cell cycle has two main parts, interphase and cell division. Cell division where it is dividing, interphase where it is not. Interphase consists of three different phases, growth, DNA duplication, and preparing for cell division itself. Cell division consists of two connected parts, mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis, where you divide up the DNA, and cytokinesis, where you divide up everything else in the cell. 